Welcome back. This week in Nemeth class, we are talking just about shapes. These are the kind of shapes that traditionally you would have seen introduced in a geometry class, maybe sophomore year of high school. Today, with the common use of strand curriculum, where students do a little bit of arithmetic, a little bit of geometry, and a little bit of algebra around and around and around again at every grade level, you'll even see some of these symbols be introduced very young, maybe in kindergarten, definitely by third grade, you'll see students using shape symbols, maybe even angle symbols pretty early. So it's important for all TBIs to know how to build those symbols in the Nemeth code. They're all built on the shape indicator, which is dots one, two, four, six, and that indicates to the reader that what follows has its shape meaning, that it's going to mean what a shape does. In that, we've got the ability to make angles. The angle symbol in math is dots one, two, four, six, followed by a left pointing shape, so a dot two, four, six. This is the reason why we don't have a shorthand for a left arrow, other than right arrow being used more often. It is that this symbol is used for something else in Braille, the angle symbol. Angles are often labeled. A label tells you how you would know which angle on the diagram it is. If, for example, you had angle VTW, there would be a space between the angle symbol and the label of that angle, VTW in this case, in Braille. In print, you might not see any space there. There might not be any space there, but in Nemeth code, there is always a space between the angle symbol and the label of that symbol. That doesn't mean that there's necessarily a space added before it. If there's, you know, M for the measure or a variable placed ahead of it, that stays. But there is that space between the angle and its label. And our handout for this week that I've made for you with kind of some color coding to help you focus on the different component parts of the examples will show that spacing. I encourage you to look at it closely because especially depending on which textbook you're using, they may not give a lot of really high quality examples of the ways that they're used. And if that's the case, here's a couple more examples that are broken down for you. So check your class website for this handout. Note that when there is a sign of comparison, in the equation, it maintains its spacing. You can see that in angle A equals angle B, that we have angle space A because the measure or the label is separated from the angle sign. And then there's a space after A before the equal sign and after the equal sign before the next angle symbol. So it's not that the thing before it always touches the angle symbol, just that it can if it should. On that same note, there are some actual signs of comparison that are made using the shape indicator, and you saw them in an earlier chapter. Signs of comparison like parallel or not parallel, perpendicular or not perpendicular, are based on this shape indicator. So it's the shape indicator and in L for parallel, meaning that two lines run next to each other. The shape indicator followed by P for perpendicular, showing that things cross at a 90 degree angle or abut at a 90 degree angle. If you are using those which are themselves signs of, signs of comparison, then you need to have a space on both sides of the sign of comparison per the rules of the Nemeth code. But when it's an angle and it's label or an angle uh, with a measure, then you do need that space between the angle symbol and the label that follows it specifically. Then there are some other common shapes that you'll use in geometry. A circle is shape C. A square is shape 4. Note the difference. The 4 is the dropped numeral, whereas the circle is labeled with its letter C. Square has four sides or four vertices, so the square symbol is shape 4. And that refers specifically to a regular square. We can do the same thing with a regular pentagon or a regular hexagon. If the sides were of unequal length, then we would have to go to a more specific way to note that. And I think most people would look it up if that came up in their class. But commonly, 
in math classes, kids use circles and squares and rhombuses and rectangles and diamonds and triangles all the time. So let's make sure you know those ones. Square is shape four, diamond is shape D, rectangle is shape R, and you might need to draw a rectangle in on your handout because I think it's not printing for people. Triangle, when it's just a standard equilateral triangle peak up, is shape T. It does not follow the number pattern. It, it is T for triangle in this case. There are lots of shapes that are built on the shape symbol, and then there are even some ways to combine and modify and change them. Look closely at your book for detailed examples on those, but I wanted to just highlight the things that I think you'll use most professionally. If your homework has an example of a rhombus on it and goes ahead and tells you this is a rhombus, make sure that you use the rhombus symbol for that diagram. Don't substitute another shape symbol, even if it looks the same or has the same meaning but a different name. Because if the student is learning on the sheet that this is a rhombus, then they need the Nemeth code shape symbol for rhombus, which is different than the Nemeth code shape symbol for parallelogram generically or maybe diamond or something else. So when you need to make a rhombus, use that specific shape rather than just anything that looks kind of like it. If these are used with punctuation, then punctuate them accordingly using a punctuation indicator and the following letter, but that would still happen in a math passage just fine. They can be set up inside of an equation, like you can add circle plus square to get diamond. You can have them used as variables themselves, sometimes especially in really little kids' worksheets. So square sense plus circle sense equals something, and they have to solve for how many usually how many nickels and how many dimes they would use to make that. If the shape is standing in for a sign of operation or standing in for a sign of comparison and you're not going to use a sign of omission for it because maybe the circle is consistently standing in for something, then do follow the spacing of the role the shape is playing. So if it's acting like a sign of comparison, put spaces on both sides. If it's acting like a sign of operation, don't space on either side of the shape. So pay attention to that as you're going, but it should be pretty straightforward. There just is a way in Nemeth to braille each of those common geometric shape indicators, and you can use them in larger, more complex equations the same way you would any other term in a math equation. They all just go together like building blocks. Until next week, happy brailing! One more note on shape indicators and geometry. While there is a way to show a rectangle or a circle in geometry, and there are even ways to modify them and say the circle is on top of the rectangle or the rectangle is on top of the circle, those are inherently descriptive shapes, which is useful in a linear equation, but not always useful in geometry. I want to make very clear that there's another thing called tactile graphics where the lines can be raised on the edge of a shape, where you can write the label right in the middle of the shape, where the circles can be drawn intersecting the lines the way they intersect in print, so that all of the details of the shape, including their size and their spatial arrangement and everything else that's important to solving a geometric equation um, or a geometric spatial problem can be represented. So in the case of a math class, instead of describing a complex image with multiple shapes intersecting, it would almost always be better to simply make a tactile graphic of those things. There might You might need to use the circle indicator in a key labeling it, the square indicator, or the square shape in an problem or a question wording to ask about, you know, what is the area of rectangle C that the student is supposed to calculate, uh, but know that it is possible for a braille embosser to emboss raised lines along the edges of all sorts of shapes now. There are numerous pieces of software that can be used to make it quicker and easier to transform things. It's even possible to just take the math worksheet and print it on 
swell paper, put it through a PF machine, and toast it and have those lines raise without it even being done in a braille machine. There are many, many ways to make tactile graphics, and by the time you get to geometry, tactile graphics are going to be superior to just writing the shape names for anything where those shapes interact or behave or have traits that the student needs to figure out. So while you're learning to write shapes, I want to keep in perspective what they're used for. They're used for when the problem says, what is the area of square symbol C, rather than for actually giving the area of square symbol C. Happy brailing!